Okay, so for all my for all my talk about vacations, I think I'm actually going to move into the law of cosines today. We can try doing a few uh, application type problems tomorrow or Friday rather. Um, the law of cosines. Like the law of signs from Wednesday is a tool for solving triangles. So for finding missing sides and missing angles. Um, let's see. The law of cosines is used for SAS triangles. So like if you if you have this information and you want to find the um missing side, you would use the law of cosines. Uh, let's try that. Oh. Let's try that again. So, um, it's also used in SSS triangles to find missing angles. And between the law of cosines and the law of sines, if a triangle can be solved, we'll be able to solve it. That is, if the information we have is enough information to uniquely determine the triangle, then between the two of them, we can uniquely determine the triangle. <laughs> the law of cosines, the way it always shows up in books and so on, it gets stated as, as sort of three different equations, which I think is a mistake and is sort of miscommunicating the law of cosines or making the law of cosines more complicated than it needs to be. The law of cosines relates the sides of a triangle with an angle of the triangle gamma. And the law of cosines, when you see it, it's going to start out to looking familiar. C squared equals a squared plus b squared. So it starts out as the Pythagorean theorem, but then we get some other stuff. Minus two times A times B times the cosine of gamma. So, In a situation like, like this, we can use the law of cosines to find the missing side. And then once we know, well, that's, um, let's do that. Let me uh, not run ahead. Let's say we have Four 
and seven and 40 degrees. And we want to find that missing side C. Well, we're going to get something that is going to look ugly, but not actually be ugly. I mean, as messy as the right-hand side of this triangle is, it's, it's just a number, and we can type it straight into our calculator. Four, seven, 40. We should still be in degree mode, and we are. So four squared plus seven squared minus two times four times seven times the cosine of 40. 22 point some stuff. One is zero two. And then it's a square root to finish things up. So the square root of, you can just, that's, there's what I'm looking for here. A square root of the answer, let's just not have to type that in. And I did not mean to do it twice, but this first one is what we're looking for. 4.701. And if we, um, wanted to then finish solving the triangle. When you're solving triangles, you're often kind of mixing and matching. Now we want that angle, let's say. And at this point, probably the easiest way to find the angle is to use the law of sine. If we call this angle alpha, then the sine of alpha over four is the sine of 4.701 over, what am I doing? I, I'm putting the side where I should be putting the angle and vice versa is the sine of 40 degrees over 4.701. So the sine of alpha is this. And 
If all goes well, Alpha is going to be the arc side of this, and all should go well. We only run into trouble when we have obtuse angles, and at least assuming that that triangle is drawn anything like to scale, um, we do not have obtuse angles. And alpha is the arc side of all of that. Arc sine, not arc cosine. Let's try that again. Arc sine of four point. Short term memory of a goldfish, arc sine of four, sine 40. Divided by 4.701. Um, you actually did two ones and All right. Thank you. Let me fix that. 33.157. And now I should have drawn this thing bigger. Let me go up here. Four, seven, 40, 33.157, uh, 4.701. And then to round things off, you don't, uh, let's see. You don't um, need to use any fancy trig. This angle 40 and this angle 33 ought to add up to be 180. So 180 minus 40 minus the answer. 106.84. So this uh, this thing that I ha huh. okay this thing that I'm I uh, just made up did not end up being perfectly to scale. But it does look right. I mean, in the sense that the side opposite the bigger angle should generally be larger than the sides opposite the smaller angles. And we do have that. So we can use the law of cosines in combination with the law of sines to solve triangles like SAS. As for triangles SSS, where we already know all of the um, sides and we want to know the angles, let's see, is this a uh, realistic triangle, I think it is. Um, for a, for a triangle should have the property that any time you add up two of the sides, it's bigger than the third side. So this does have that property. Uh, 
again, because I'm just doing everything um, X sort of, because this is a made up triangle, I can't promise that it's perfectly to scale or anything like that, but, but we can find the missing angles. And I mean, the law of signs is helpless here because the law of signs, you need at least one angle. The law of cosines, though, says that nine squared is four squared plus seven squared minus two times four times seven times the cosine of this angle. So a little messier than, than in our last case, we're going to have to solve for the cosine and then we're going to have to use some inverse trig, but nine squared is 81. Four squared plus seven squared, I should be able to do in my head, but I'm going to just quickly do this. Yep. And speaking of doing it in your head, um, 49 plus six is 55 plus another 10 is 65. Um, two times four is eight times seven is 56. Times the cosine of gamma. Um, so take the 65 over to the right. Um, 81 minus 60 is 21, minus one is 20, minus four, if I'm doing that right, 16 is negative, 56 times the cosine of gamma. So, negative 16 over 56 is the cosine of gamma, and I did not draw this to scale, I guess. Gamma is going to be bigger than 90 degrees, but arc cosine of negative 16 over 56 equals gamma. And the nice thing about the law of cosines, it might look messier than the law of sines, but it always, it never gives us a false angle. That situation we ran into um, Monday where it was giving us a, what was it, giving us an a, acute angle when we knew it had to be obtuse. That's never going to happen with the law of cosines. The angle we get is the angle we get. The arc cosine of, what was it? Um, negative 16 over 56. Negative 16 over 56. 
Let's just round to the nearest uh, decimal, 107 degrees. So on tests, you know, I guarantee, and, and in the homework, in the textbook, if an angle looks acute, it's going to be acute for these problems I'm coming up with in class. I obviously am not having the greatest track record, but um, once we have found N, angle using the law of cosines. I mean, I guess we have options, you know, if we, if we want this angle now, we could repeat that same process and end up using the arc cosine or we could say that the sine of alpha over four is the sine of 170 degrees over nine. So law of sines, law of cosines, and some um, whatever, whatever seems best. I tend to think that the law of signs is going to require less uh, typing or less writing. Nine times this. Nope, I don't want to go that way. Rather, what? Oh, interesting. There's a. Uh, Zoom option that I, I don't know quite what purpose that's serving, but let's try to get back to the regular pen and um, the sine of alpha is four times the sine of a hundred seven. I really should be writing the degree symbol in because properly speaking without the degree symbol you're really talking about radians but this entire chapter or all of this material is done using degrees so i'm not super fussed over it. And we can solve for alpha in this way. So the arc sine of four sine 107 over nine. Twenty five degrees and then again we don't have once we have two angles we don't have to use any fancy trigonometry, 180 minus, what were the other angles? Um, 107 and 20. 48 degrees. And I mean, this stuff gets used all of the time in real world settings. I mean, obviously in sort of 
this day and age, a lot of um, a lot of it is going to go on under the hood in a computer program rather than being done sort of um, pen and paper. But let's do an example where we'll use something. Um, law of sines, law of cosines, I don't know yet. But let's look at triangulation. So, triangulation comes from the idea that you're tr trying to um, locate some object. And you have two observers. People, radio towers, machines, whatever. But you've got two observers. And both of these observers are looking at the thing you're trying to locate. And they're recording angles. So like, one of your observers says, well, I'm looking in this direction at a 20 degree angle, and I see the person or plane or ship or whatever it is I'm trying to find. And the other observer says, well, I'm looking at a 40 degree angle, and I also see whatever it is that we're tracking, the, the missing person. We're using cell phone towers to try to track a missing person's cell phone. And the towers are on a highway. They're 100 miles apart. And we want to know, well, how far is this missing person from the highway? And maybe some other stuff as well. But this is a sort of classic example of this type of trigonometry. Um, and among other things, and this is something we sort of already mentioned when we were talking about the law of signs, it's a classic example of this type of trigonometry, even though the question we're asking is not one of the things that the law of sines and the law of cosines seem designed to actually do. What these various laws we've learned should actually let us do is find the sides of that triangle. There is nothing in the law of sines or the law of cosines that's supposed to let us find this distance. But again, we think about this a little and we say, well, you know, here's a 40 degree angle. If we could find this side of the triangle, for example, then the sine of 40 degrees would be that distance we're looking for divided by C. Or if we could find this side of the triangle, we could go over here and the sine of 20 degrees 
would be the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Either way, we could find that D. We could find that distance. So even though the law of sines and or the and or the law of cosines don't explicitly give us what we're looking for, they're a necessary step in the process. So with that, observation made. Well, let, let me keep the keep these. Um, we want to find either A or C. Um, we have all of the angles. I mean, we only have two of the angles actually written down, but 40 plus 20 plus the missing angle has to equal 180. So, this missing angle must be 120. So we know all of the angles and we want to find um, one of these sides. And there are, there's probably It wouldn't surprise me if there's more than one way to go about this, but um, to me, um, it's, I mean, well, what, why don't we just sort of throw it open? If we want one of those sides, do you think the law of sines or the law of cosines? Um. Well, that's not, that's not guess. Let's go back to our notes and let's remind ourselves what we need for the law of cosines. It's either side, angle, side, or side, side, side. This is not side, side, side. And in, in fact, it's neither of those things because the law of cosines really expects you to have at least two sides of the triangle, if not three. Whereas the law of sines, you know, we have an angle and an opposite side. And then we have an angle and what we want, that opposite side C. The law of signs will let us set this up as the sine of 120 over 100. is the sine of 20 over C. And solving for C, um, I'm just going to plug the sine of 120 over 100 into my calculator and get the decimal for that. Uh huh. So point zero zero nine. Oops.
the, the, of course, the thing about using horizontal bars is that it makes it look like you've got division. Um, so that was point zero zero nine. Hey, soon. equals the sine of 20 over C. So C is the sine of 20 over point zero zero nine. Uh thirty eight point zero zero two. Maybe that's just say thirty eight. And now this uh, this frame is getting quite messy indeed, so. So we're trying to find, if we recall the fiction, we're trying to find a missing person by triangulating cell phone signals. And this, this point here is a cell tower. It's a known location. So if we can find this side of the triangle, we'll know how far to the east search teams need to go. And if we then find that side of the triangle, we'll know how far north search teams need to go. And we'll know where to, to send our search team. And at this point, now that we've used the law of signs to find that 38, we are back in, back in right triangle territory. The sine of 40 degrees is the opposite side over 38. So 38 times the sine of 40 is the opposite side about 24.4 miles. And now, I guess you actually could just use the 
Pythagorean theorem, but we've used trigonometry for everything else so far. So to find the east-west distance, the cosine of 40 degrees is the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So 38 times the cosine of 40, 29.5 one more or less. This is this is the process. of triangulation, having two different observers, tracking something that you want to locate. If you know how far apart the observers are and you can keep track of these angles, this angle and this angle, then you can track whatever you're trying to track. And that's the law of cosines. Um, pretty. Let's see. 